All right, now let's talk about using DHCP options to advertise controller addresses to your APs. So prerequisite here, the AP actually has to use DHCP to get its IP address, otherwise this method is really off the table. The DHCP server has to be configured to include one or more controller IPs uh, to, re to return to the access point in that DHCP response. Again, option 43 works regardless of the AP model, works on everything. Uh, option 60 allows you to turn, return a list of IPs on a per AP model basis, specifically looking at the vendor class identifier information um, in the AP's DHCP request information. So as we configure option 43, we're actually going to have to define the IP addresses of the controllers in hex decimal representation, and we have to follow a specific format of the hex string that we return. So here is the, the details of how to format that hex string. It's something you're going to want to definitely commit to memory. So the general format is going to start F1. It always starts F1. The next two hex characters is the result of taking the number of controllers that we want to advertise times four. So if it's one controller, it would be 0, 04 because we need two characters, two controllers, 0, 08, um, 30 C because we're talking hex and so on up the line. And then finally, at the end of that, it is going to be the hex representation of the IP address of each controller. So it's, it takes eight hex characters to represent the four dot decimal notation IP, um, numbers for, for an IP address. So if you look um, at the, the line where we start having some colored uh, text for the WLC IPs, each shot text matched the two hex characters. So for our instance, uh, if we had an IP address that was 192.168.100.10, we just take each of those dotted decimal notation numbers and translate it to hex. So 192 in hex is C0, 168 in hex is A8, 100 is 64, and 10 is 0A. We always need two characters per number, even if you don't actually need two characters to represent it, like that 10 at the end. Um, so let's say that we want to advertise two controller IPs, 192, 168, 10, or 110 and 100.20. The format would read as follows. It starts with the F1, as always, 08, because we're advertising two sets of IP addresses, and then the first IP address, and then the second IP address. So it really doesn't matter which one's first, which one's second. Um, it, it just all adds to that big old list that the APs compile up before it starts reaching out to controllers. Now option 60, um, we have to define the vendor class identifier. And it's going to be in the format listed right behind me, so let me hide myself. So the Cisco APC 3500 right at the very end there. Um, make sure that as you do this, um, case sensitive definitely is, is important. So the, the C in Cisco has to be capitalized. The AP has to be capitalized. The C in front of the 3500 has to be lowercase. And then the last number is really just the, the series of access points. So 3500, 1260, you know, 1240, all those different model numbers. There's a document uh, that talks about how to use option 43 and option 60. It has a list of all the different options uh, for all the different models of AP. So you can always reference it there. But in general, just take the model number of the AP and just make the last digit a zero. Most of the time, that, that'll work for you. So let's actually show you how to do this now on the switches. Okay, so I'll show you option 43 in the iOS, and then I'll show you option 43 as well as option 60 on a Windows server as well. Now, I could show you option 60 in iOS, but it's actually broken, at least on 3560s switches, 3750 switches, um, in the code that we're using with the 12.2 um, SE code. It just doesn't work. Regardless of whatever you specify for the vendor class identifier, you know, that Cisco AP C3500, it'll re return the IP address of the controllers regardless. So it doesn't matter if it matches, doesn't matches, it just re responds. So it's almost just like plain option 43 at that point. So I won't really get into that on, on the switches because it's broken. It's possible there's other switch models that it does actually work in, but at least with the ones that we are worrying about, it doesn't. So. Well, you, we have some APs on VLAN 113, so what I'll do is I'll configure a DHCP scope on CAT2, 
and advertise a controller with option 43. So let me go ahead and hide myself so you don't have to stare at my top of my head. All right, we just need to simply configure a DHCP pool here. IP DHCP pool for VLAN 113. And when I say VLAN 113, this is just an arbitrary name. I always name it after my VLANs, but it doesn't have to be. We always start off with the network command 10.10.113.0. It's a slash 24 network. Give it a default gateway 10.10.113.1. And now I configure my option 43. So option 43, we need to do this in hex. Uh, there is, I think, one really old AP where you would do it in ASCII, but everything we're doing today is hex. And now I just need my hex string. So let's go ahead and just do a single controller. So I always start F1. If I'm doing, doing one controller, I need to do 04. And now I need to do the IP address of the controller in hex. So my controller I'll do is 10101110. So 10 is 0A.10, so another 0A. 111 is 6F, and I have this memorized. Normally I would just I use a calculator to convert decimal to hex, but I've done this enough times that I have it memorized. And then finally another 10, so another 0A. So I have my F1, one controller, 0, 04, and then I have eight hex digits to represent my IP address. Now let's go ahead and take a look at one of my eight um, controllers, or sorry, APs. So we see it got an address. Tried one time, it didn't have that option 43 because it took me a little while to, to add it in there. And it's still not grabbing it. So what we want to look is on, uh, after the translating uh, Cisco Capo to controller entry, we'll see a couple lines, or one or more lines that would show us if DHCP option 43 is working. It'll actually tell us if it, if it discovered some um, controllers via option 43, and what the IP addresses of those controllers are. So that lets us know, one, is it working? And two, am I advertising the right IP addresses? Since we're often converting into hex, it's really easy to, to screw it up and, and put the wrong hex characters, give it the wrong IP address, then all of a sudden it doesn't work. Okay, here's the line we want. Controller address 10.10.111.10 obtained through DHCP. So here I verify that option 43 is working and I advertise the correct IP address that I was intending to. Now, if I had advertised more than one IP address, I would see separate lines, and on each line, I would get a different IP address that was learned. So if I was expecting two IPs, I would have two lines, one line for one IP, one line for the other. And again, we're verifying that's working and which IPs I'm advertising. Since it discovered the IP, it reached out, joined up the controller, and everything's happy. So that's configuring DHCP option 43 on a switch as well as validating on the AP itself that option 43 is working. Next, we'll go ahead and do um, the same option 43, but we'll do it on a, uh, a Windows 2003 server.